Thank you for that lovely and erudite introduction. Thank you. Um, I, I think there are going to be slides, um, that's my hope. Um, originally I was going to do it without slides, and I mentioned it to somebody and they looked a bit crestfallen. Um, <laughs> as I think they were thinking they'd have to spend the whole time looking at my fizzle. But um, anyway, we're going to have some slides. Um, they're not terribly important actually, but they do, <laughs> if you're beginning to drift off, you can try. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, to be serious, I think we're probably all agreed that there is something that is the matter with things at the moment. And of course the title of that book, it makes a pun about our obsession with uh, a sort of version of mere matter. And I always say materialists, not people who overvalue matter, but undervalue matter, because it's a mysterious thing, matter. Um, and that we are obsessed with the idea that the world is made up of things. I believe with Whitehead and with many other philosophers going back to Heraclitus that what is real is process, is flow. Everything is changing and flowing all the time and that what we call things are, as it were, little visible elements and nodes in the flow that attract our attention. And Whitehead's going to come up a bit, I think. Whitehead said this rather simple but rather profound thing, as we think, we live. And if there's something wrong with the way we live now, perhaps it relates to how we think. That's what I can just talk about uh, first. Um, okay, the quote from Pascal is, you can find almost the same words said by Kant, by Goethe, um, by Bergson, uh, and by other philosophers, but you can also find it in the uh, um, native traditions of many peoples around the world. So there is this profound sense that there are two, two of us in there, so to speak. Um, and I'm going to give you a bit, I mean, I assume many of you will know my work, so I don't want to be tedious but I'm going to try and do what uh, Jonathan Rowson calls McGilchrist 101, so it's very, very brief and basic. So um, I just want to make some very obvious points. First of all, the brain is divided. Uh, this chap uh, has had the skull removed and the, um, uh, the membranes that surround the brain uh, taken, the meninges uh, removed. Uh, he doesn't look at all happy about it. Um, <laughs> Uh, he did die in 1542. Um, this thing is not right, actually, either. Um, oh, I hate technology. Um, <laughs> um, but you, that, what that shows is his left hemisphere has been pulled to the side to show that band marked L there in the middle, which is the corpus callosum, the band of fibers that joins the two hemispheres. But the first question is, why have two hemispheres? Hello? Hemispheres the brain connects. The important thing is that they have masses of connections and their power comes from all those connections. So why is it whoppingly divided down the middle? Not just the human brain, but every brain that we look at in mammals, in amphibians, in reptiles, the ganglia in insects, every single creature that lives or lived seems to have had this asymmetric division. And the most ancient living uh, organism uh, Nemesisella vectensis, uh, living off the Isle of Wight, where it's 700 million years old and therefore blends in well with the local population, <laughs> has, uh, and has been described as the ancestor of the mammalian brain, already shows asymmetry. Uh, next thing, why is it asymmetric as well as divided. Um, I'm not going to go into this in any detail, but uh, basically up here is the right. The right's on the left and the left's on the right by an annoying convention of uh, uh, anatomical diagrams. So you're looking up at the base of the brain as if you were inhabiting your spinal column and looking up at the base of it. And as you can see, the left hemisphere is both broader and juts backwards and across the midline. And we, we learned about that in medical school because it was all supposed to be about language, you know. And language is terribly important. It's the thing that, you know, distinguishes us from other animals. Uh, but nobody meant... Oh, oh, hello. 
No, don't want that. Um, some, nobody mentioned that the actually most asymmetrical part of the brain is in the frontal right part of the brain, where again you see it's broader and juts forward and so forth. And that was never mentioned. But this actually is terribly important because this area serves pretty much all the things that matter to us in life uh, with the rest of the right hemisphere. <laughs>